And the last time I did the intro, so now it's your. This is your show. This is your plan. Okay, but we're gonna introduce ourselves. We got yes. <laughs> we got here. Go for it. So um, I am Millie Milky Mill. I I am DWI New York's most influential producer. And this is the lesson plan. The lesson plan. Yes, I love it. I love it. People love it. So I'm ready to get into. it. I'm ready to learn so a thing or two. Before we get into it, let's just do a quick. Oh mantra. yeah, you don't wear headphones either, so yeah, I gotta so do let, all let, this. Let's do our let's do our mantra. Okay. So um, let's just get started with that. Mm-hmm. So it's a call and response. Okay. I am special. I am special. I am intelligent. I am intelligent. I am brilliant. I am brilliant. Well, I do one of these every morning. Can I sing it like as a song? No. No, go ahead. I am brilliant. brilliant. I am brilliant. I am kind. I am kind. I am a student. I am a student. And I am a teacher. And I am a teacher. Okay. With that being said, let's get started. Welcome to our show. Um, Our guest today is... Let's go through this because he has a lot. Yeah, let's read the script. A lot of information. So we have KK here which is an A&R, control fact for Erica Badu, mm-hmm. manager for AZ, Jazzo, Chico DeBarge, Knox, and more. <laughs> and um, <laughs> he's also worked with Champ Zab Judah, um, and he's had his own music group. Okay. And thank you for having me. All right. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Um, so we're excited to have you here today, and we want to start with your background. Who were the people that inspired you while growing up? Mm-hmm. A little bit about yourself, even though I know. Mm-hmm. So before that, so KK and I went to Art and Design together. Art the design. famous Shout out to Art and Design. Art we got design. we got two interns coming. So many people. Art and um, Where's that school located? Perfect. So yeah. it's a melting pot. People from all over the boroughs. We come from Brooklyn. So Queens, we met. Harlem, so we met Bronx. at Art and Design. Yeah. I was close friends with his play cousin. Yeah, she called us play cousin. Sister. Yeah, his oh, play cousin did. and um his sister Tamika. And um, who we can't find right we now. We can't find. So if you so watch wherever this, you at, <laughs> you got an APB out, Akisha. Find us. Yeah. Um. So she told me, you know, here's my cousin. Meet him. Make sure that we keep an eye out for him. So we met. Yeah, I wasn't I his met. fat dad. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, so he was just this cute little kid that ran around with braids. And, you know, we kept an eye out for him. And here we are. Here we are. Here we are. So so this is the first one. You know, it's always the first one is either always going to be the best or it's going to be the one you look mm-hmm. back at and be like, wow, we was a wreck back then. But we started <laughs> off with KK. So I, I think we're going to be started. all right. I think you guys are going to be all right. Yeah. yeah. So. I came in here and he had nothing but stories for me. So I said, oh, this is going to so be, we we're picking up right where we, lo- where we left go. off. So go. tell us where it all began. Well, I'm a Brownsville kid from Brownsville, Brooklyn. Um, born and raised, uh, single parent home. My mom raised three of us. Church lady to the death of it. We went to Mount Zion Baptist Church. Oh, you you like Millie? You don't wear headphones either? No, oh, we, man. We don't do, if we you don't give do me some. Oh, yeah. oh, so okay. now we have to we have to be into the mic. Okay. So ah, this is, one out today. <laughs> this is perfect. I can hear everything. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, mom was heavy in church. You know, she didn't believe that music uh, for us was a thing. Like it was like, if you're not singing gospel music or secular oh, music, right. then you playing in a devil's playground. So <laughs> the person that actually got me involved in the music industry was James Roseman or Jimmy Henchman. Everyone mm-hmm. likes to call okay. him. Mm-hmm. He, uh, uh, he managed the game, Brandy, Blood Raw, ooh, Akon, tons of people. And he was, he was at that time, he was doing, um, Groove Theory, which was uh, signed to Epic. He had Sweet Tea or Sugar okay. from back in the day who was signed to Jam Master J. I was very good friends with Jam Master J and a couple of those guys. Rest in peace. Definitely. And knew 50, 50 Cent very well at that time because he was writing records for Sweet Tea. A lot of people don't know that. Like, he's an excellent, you know, he's not as good or great mm-hmm. on my side of the family. But the one thing that I do know about Fifth 
from the early days, like his pen game was excellent. He could write for R and B artists. Um, and you know, he did the same thing for Destiny Child. He right. wrote a bunch of records for Destiny Child. He wrote records for um Damn, God knows everybody. Sugar Sweet Tea is is a bunch of records that Fifth got out right now that a lot of people don't even know he penned. And I'm not a Fifth fan at all. Right, right. So, but you're just so. speaking about the stats. Exactly. You're speaking what you know. The music and yeah. his contributions to the music. Yeah. Um. So, KK, what were some of the obstacles during your come up in going into the industry? Well, I I like to say it was it was friends and family because. My uncles and them did music. Mario, Ma- Mario Rosemont did music. Uh-huh. Um, Jimmy did music. So those guys was in. Like right. I was new. So, you know, a lot of people was like, you don't even play an instrument. Like, why right. would you want to be in the music industry? And what really had did it for me, we had, he, they signed a group called the Invisies. The Invisies had a record called Hagen Dazs. You can find <laughs> this one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the craziest thing, right? When we get down there to this to this video shoot, is a bunch of beautiful women. They got butter pecan Ricans. They got rum raisin. Mm-hmm. They got all these flavors, right, of women, oh, plethora. right, right. Okay. And there was a group of guys like off to the side, and they were listening to this this music. They going crazy, and we watching them. Me and my little brother, we watching them. We like, yo, they got Rolexes on, mm-hmm. diamonds in in places that we never even knew right. you could have diamonds in. And they came walking back over and we said, yo, what were you guys listening to? They said, oh, some rap rapper named hmm. Biggie Smalls. He oh, wow. playing wow. us the album right now. So that's that was his... your intro to Biggie. And I was like, <laughs> yo, so. First hand. We don't have to sell drugs. We ain't got the, this is the yeah, era that yeah, we're from, right? Yeah. We ain't got the rob. We ain't got the steal. He's literally a poet. He's writing down what he sees in the hood exactly. and what he's going through. Telling our and... stories just like that. And it was he was in there with a little BMW, mm-hmm. none to it. And it, yo, you nobody's head didn't stop doing this the whole entire time. Mm-hmm. That was the first time I ever heard party and bullshit. Mm. No. That's yeah. my song too. And then I was good. discussing with KK earlier last week how in school I was the one that was going to all the different concerts and different things. And he was so quiet about his passion or mm-hmm. interest in music. So it's very interesting, interesting to know to see. later on down the line that he went off to do all these amazing things because everyone was shutting me down nobody it it would be times where it would be like all right we can go to the studio and we can just hang out and be like well why would we do that like why right, are we, right. who are those guys you're going to hang out with so for me it was like all right if i can get over there and i can learn how to engineer mm-hmm. if i can learn how to dj if i can learn how to do all of the things then maybe i'll be, become mm-hmm very important to the people that are around here. We got little Sean that was up here. We got Sweet Tea, a kid named Ammo that was signed to Def Ammo, Jam. I remember, yeah. Oh, I was supposed to be Ammo's little hype man right. and DJ and all this other stuff. So you should DJ so you first? Became, you became yeah. a student of the craft, right? Yes, yes. Were there any books? Was you cutting and scratching? Was you, you blend? Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no. Was, no, no. I just yeah. wonder, was he cutting and scratching? Was you blending? <laughs> yes. Was DJ, DJ? DJ Boogie Black. There was a inside czar or henchman studios egg bar management there was a main room where the engineers everybody jay-z and all these guys came in here to record their records and then there was the b room right mm-hmm. and that's where i had my little turntable set up and i would be in there scratching, scratching and doing Aww. my thing and <laughs> trying to figure it out and playing a little acoustic guitar oh you was it. doing everything you was doing mad much because they said i could everything. not they exactly. said Yo, you yes, can't I do cannot. it so now i'm gonna do everything that you guys said that I could not do everything. And you did. That Coquito is fucking delicious. <laughs> right, right. No. Were there and any you got like, books or anything that you can share out? Because again, you are a teacher. Yes. And you're in the role of also being a student, teacher being a student, the student being a teacher. Were there any books or anything that you read along the way or inspired by any artist to go into the field? Yes. Well, I, I can't move forward without saying all praises due to the most uh, a mm-hmm. law, but Jazzo, Jazzo, Jazzo. I gotta say, he came in there with these books, these uh, Doctor York Malachi books, mm-hmm. and I was in between because my mom was in church. Mm-hmm. I like Islam because it was more focused. When when Jazz came in and bring the zigzag of law books, and he was saying something different, it was just like yeah. Jazzo was dope. Too. Yeah, oh my God. 
And then he was the he was the dude that bring us Jay Z. Like right. mm-hmm. he introduced he me to away. yeah, to Clark Kent and Source Money and all of these guys. And I was standing around like, yo, this is he was like the matriarch of that. Mm-hmm. You know, before I don't know the debacle. Well, I do know what happened in right. the debacle. <laughs> you know, he was Jazz O and and he gave me the books and one of the books that he gave me was Beware the Pale Horse, uh, 48 Powers of Law, Against Zigzag of Law. Um, any spiritual literature I can get my hands on at that time, I was a sponge. I read every and anything, but those were the three that really gave me insight. Like it, the 48, Resonated. Yeah, the 48 Powers of Law was like basically common sense. Right. But someone was like, this is the music industry Bible. If you need to get anywhere, this is the book that you're going to need. And I studied the footnotes and went through everything in there and made sure that, you know, oh, never outshine the master. And right. Make sure that, you know, you don't build the walls and do this and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yo. I had questions because that book is the book that a lot of people that go to jail say that they read. And so I wondered, I always wondered, is that like the rites of passage book for guys that get locked up to read? And do those lessons actually help you when you come home? or? Is it a little bit of both? Common sense, not wanting to do wrong, and applying those the, those 48 laws to I life? I think it's all of the above. Um, one, it is common sense. One, it is the rite of passage. And someone who loves you and cares about you. Again, this is what I feel. If they want you to do better, they're going to pass you some knowledge mm-hmm. that can be used to further your career or whichever way you go. Mm-hmm. So I think, hands down, yeah. It's a good read and it is the right to passage. I, I hope. That so that should be given out in school before they get to jail. I One would think that that should be a lesson plan in school, in education, yeah. before they get to yeah. Yeah. Right. tools. Millie, can you set that up? Because I know you got some, Maybe, pull some strings. Maybe, you never know. Sometimes we can't cross, you know, religion with school. No, no, 48 laws of power is not. It can be something outside of, outside of school that we can apply. Maybe. Yeah. I think it's a business, uh, uh, excellent business tool for the younger kids, because I was reading it at 16, 17 years old. Mm -hmm. And it helped me out because it was like, all right, this is common sense, but we have to be reminded of common sense. And I think common sense ain't so common. It's not as common as we we believe. Yeah. So, KK, on that note, even though we try to stay positive all the time, um, Uh what were some of the hiccups (laughs) or trials and tribulations that you went through while trying to get your foot and through the door. Well, I stayed um, at Agbar Henchman for I want to say until I finished uh, art and design. design. And I came into the office, and Mario and Jimmy was sitting in there, and it was like, "All right, it's time for you to get out of here." Mm-hmm. I said, "Get out of here and go away. Go away. Spread your wings. <laughs> go to <laughs> college." And I was like, "College? Y'all said that the second right. I finished high school that I could be in here running a thing with everybody else and doing the thing." Mm-hmm. And they were like, nah, bro, go to college. You have to put in the work. And I said, why? I don't have time to go to college. Oh, my God, this is this killing is me. Right? And they made me stop and go to college. And hands down, I got to say, and um, I did. I, I went to Miami Day University for a little bit. I didn't so in to. retrospect, right? Yeah. Was that your teachable moment? Was that something that even though you were disappointed in having to go off and do the actual book work right Mm -hmm. and bring that back how do you feel about that i felt like they slighted me i felt like they (laughs) tricked me like they you know they kept raising it i felt like charlie brown with lucy with the football like every Mm -hmm. time i was running to go kick the ball they would move it right and i would fall and then they would raise the bar and say all right well you're in college you know what's your major i'm like y'all y'all just said i need to go to college i don't what is I don't need a major down here. I'm just going to go down here and do these four years right quick, like a jail Mm -hmm. sentence, come Mm -hmm. back and get right back at the music. And it was like, nah, that's, you can't do that. You gain the experience. You gain the experience. Um, The book experience and the the life experience. Yeah. Some of that you bring back with you and you apply it to whatever else you're doing. Mm -hmm. Right. So So, I got one for you. mm -hmm. So when I, when I, when I, I finally decided that I had enough, Enough was enough, and mm-hmm. I was out of here, and I was coming back. And grandfather was in Miami. God rest his soul. He passed That's like two so years sorry. ago. I'm sorry, it's all it's all good. Grandpa lived a very fruitful life. 
Um, he offered houses and cars, like, just stay here. And mm-hmm. You'll be all right. And I was like, no, nah, I'm out of here. I got to go back to New York. It's calling me. I was like a fiend. You know what I'm uh-huh. saying? I get back and I knock at the door. And my mom's opening the door and she says, uh, what are you doing here? Hmm. And I said, mom, I'm home. Hmm. And she said, your ass can't stay here. Oh, reality. You still got X, Y, Z <laughs> amount to do. And suitcases and all, I was standing in that hallway, and I'm not going to lie to you, I was like, yo, what am I going to do? And I got the call from Jimmy, and he was like, yo, your mom is upset. Mm. You you had a bunch of other stuff to do, but this is what I'll do. I'll hook you up. Come over here. I'll give you a job over here, and then we can work it out. That was his sister? That's his sister? Your mom it's, is his sister? My my mother is was with his brother. Okay. So him and my father is his brother. Okay. His older brother, I think. Got it. So even though, even though they made they made you do the work, and you still had to apply yourself, even though he let you through the door, you still had to do the work and the process. Right? Yes, yeah. So it wasn't good. it. Was, and I'm when I say I was up there interning, it wasn't. I was sitting back and drinking champagne. And, you know, the floors need to be mopped. Right. The garbage needs to be taken out, and just to be around these guys. Y'all Those mopping. humbling experiences are, mm-hmm, are mm-hmm. the ones that build us, right? One of my yeah. first jobs was cleaning toilets without gloves, and I let the. Youth Did they tell you it. you couldn't use gloves? No, or they you just did didn't... not. There was no child labor laws. <laughs> <laughs> it was my first summer youth job, and I was cleaning toilets with bare ah. hands mm-hmm. and picking wow. up and chopping down trees. It was just like I think they broke every child chopping labor down law. Trees, crazy at that point, but you know, I guess that's when it, it came into effect later on. Yeah. <sighs> So, so yeah, the um, the, the influences because we already hear the family connection, but outside of that, like, what was some of your influences? Because I'm I'm big on influence. The I and DWI is influence because that is bigger than you know people on drugs and that's being influenced. People right. on social media they're being influenced. So you coming up as an A and R and as a DJ and everything that you was like, what was your biggest influence? Again, it was the hunger for more, right? Because if if I'm from Brownsville, mm-hmm. Mike Tyson, yeah, it's rough over there. Mm-hmm. yeah, it's Mike Tyson, uh, Help the Scalp the mm-hmm. Boot Camp Click right. at the time. Right. Shout out to right. them. They were the only guys that were doing MOP? it. MOP? MOP. Oh my God. Don't let me ever. Or oh, Smooth the Hustling Trick. Right, right. Those are my people. Yeah. Those are so for me to see Little Fang and Billy Danzini and these guys pulling up and limousines and so forth and so on after i done seen them get into something on a block like motivation and inspiration it was like yo you don't you don't have to do that you can actually do this Mm -hmm. and they're clever enough to do that so we're watching them come through the hallway come take care of their moms and and ain't nobody robbed nobody or bust nobody over the head you know they talked about it but i never seen billy danzini and Lil fane sell no crack or do anything crazy it was just Mm -hmm. That was the music. That it was, was the music. You know, you know, we were telling we were telling stories about what you saw around you. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily, you know, applying it to your life, but what you see. Yeah, and then I can go to Weirfield in Central Avenue, mm-hmm. and hands down, bumping to Mike Tyson flying pigeons on the right. roof. So it was like, <laughs> yo, this dude got enough money to he's feeding pigeons and doves and all types of other And then, yo, so I moved in. I live in Bushwick now, but I'm from the Bronx, so. It's just been this Brooklyn and Brooklyn. Bronx conversation, right, going <laughs> yeah. on about who's crazy or what goes down in A, B, and C. So I went to go do some with Mama Jones the other day, me and my homegirl Epiphany. We went to do a book signing over in Brownsville, right right downstairs from the L train. I think it was right on the strip, Sutter Avenue or Sutton Avenue, whatever yeah. that is. Mm-hmm. Projects is right there. But I'm like, all right, I'm from the Bronx. I'm going to move around. I'm, I'm coming to do what I'm doing. Yo, three people that I spoke to. It's like yo, be be safe over there. I'm like, what are they gonna do? They, they gonna run down on me? Is, 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 they, is it not? Is it not the same New York City code out here? Like, you just gotta pay attention to what's going on, move around. And I was just like, I was a little bit not understanding, like what's gonna happen. It was the middle of the day on a Sunday, like what's so on a Saturday or something. I, I guess know. you gotta stay stay prepared, stay, on point. stay prepared no matter what. <laughs> like they different out in Brownsville, but yeah, nah, it's dope that you made it out of out of that. So, right. um, so. I know, I don't know about anybody else, but I would run home to watch video music box. Oh, I um I would watch my cartoons. I would listen to DuckTales. DuckTales. <laughs> so what were some of the things that you did that helped? Oh, listen, like for real, for real. I had and a lot of people did be like, yo, you wow, oh, I had this VH uh uh a VH one tape, is it? Yeah. VH VHS, yeah. 
where I used to tape the other little part of the, mm-hmm. the thing. And, we record. and I recorded every Mob Deep song, mm-hmm. every uh, Onyx song, you know, anything that I could On the videos? Like, the videos yeah. I was going on. And I would, when my mom and I would leave and, you know, we can't listen to because she's a church right, lady. Right, right. We, me and my brother would be in there, listen, listen to this new Mob Deep and listen to this new LL and blah, blah, blah. And then we used to sneak. And uh, this is another one that I, I always love to tell a story. But one of my older cousins, Marvin, he gave us a Slick Rick tape. He gave us a Slick wow. Rick tape. And we used to be in the bag listening to Davy Crockett. The Indian stars. <laughs> smiling extra hard. And, Yo. You know, my mother coming, what y'all listening to? Nothing, mommy. You know, that was the most us. pornographic song as a young guy. And I had the... I had the actual d- dirty. My uncles are DJs, both so both my uncles are DJs, seven and five years older than me. So they're in the game, like they're in they hip hop before I was hip hop, and they had all the records. So they was DJs. So that that song came out, and they got some type of B side where it just had all the curses and was oh. mad raunchy. And I was just like, what is yes. this? Yes, my favorite. Like I got some Slick Ricks songs and whatnot, but Davy Crockett. Was like is that version even on the album? What was it called? Know. Indian, 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 Indian yeah, they changed yeah. it. But Davy Crockett was the actual role that was being played. Yeah, okay, I loved it. Um, but video music box, video I, music I, box, I, I think it. was the one for everyone. Oh, shout out Bobby. What's his name? Bobby Simmons. He had the other show. Bobby as Simmons well. has a show here. Yeah, yeah. Bobby yeah. Simmons is on this network. Shout out to Bobby Simmons. Shout out to Bobby <laughs> Simmons. <laughs> or was it Flavor Flavor Videos? Yeah, flavor Videos. <laughs> It's crazy. People talk about him all the time, and I'm here with him all the time, and we like reviving. And I'm like, I don't even remember remember that. Like, so I wasn't no, even. It used to be channel 32 or something like that. You had to turn the channel with the little screwdriver, oh, but it oh, would yeah. be fuzzy. And the antenna and oh yeah. goodness. Before the digital Before era. Before all the digital. Yes. I was thinking about that the other day. Like, what would we do? Like, if we had to revert back, <laughs> I think we would survive because we saw we the, would. we saw the beginning yeah, we, of it, right? Um, right. I don't think people that. Don't never had a phone before or right. never had a computer before, you know, before. They don't know what that would be like. No, I don't think. Oh, you know, uh, pre-call my... waiting, you know, cord, corded phone. <laughs> yeah. The busy <laughs> signal. The busy signal. I found a tape in the house, right? And I gave it to my daughter. I said, hey, what's this? And she's holding the tape and she's looking around it and she <laughs> turns it around again in time and she says, daddy, this is whack. <laughs> And I said, why is it whack? She was like, where do you put the headphone jacket? Exactly. And I said, wow. <laughs> the headphone jack? <laughs> not, you don't want to put it in something and didn't they press play? They were pretty much born, you know, with the internet, with everything else. We saw the birth of everything yeah. happening. Mm-hmm. You know, we live pre caller ID where we had to just, you know, are you going to pick up this phone or not? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, um, no maps to get you anywhere. We had to just figure it out, talk to one another. And I wonder why, if that's <laughs> for us, that's from the 80s, that, that grew up in the 80s. Like, if we're just wired differently, and we always say, well, back in our days, but it ain't really like a back in our mm-hmm. day. It's almost yes. like in our era, like, because yeah. the, everything changed. Absolutely. Video games, yeah. cars, and it was entertainment. A quick, quick progress. Yeah. It started off slow, and yeah. then it just took off. It started when pay phones disappeared. Pay phones disappeared. Like when you notice that you're outside, you're like, my cell phone is dead. I need right, a phone right. right quick. I can't right. even remember a phone number. That's how real it is. I know. Right? Yeah. I got like about three. That. I got like three I remember. Three? Yeah. My sisters and my uncle and one of my friend's mo- mother's Boy house. Mine. That's it. I got to look at the phone, though. I got to look at the phone to see the, the numbers. Yeah. There, yeah. But off memory is like songs. My phone number. That's it. Okay. Mm-hmm. So let's move on to something that's very important to me and it should be to many mental health mm-hmm. what yes. does mental health look like to you physical health what does physical health look like to you what are the tools and things that you can share out with others on well mental men- i think this is is it was it this month or last month that it was mental men's um, mental november, health november i believe yeah yo so many <clears throat> so many brown brothers so many brown sisters so mm-hmm. many people called them was like hey brother just checking on you making sure you're all right and i was like wow that means so much right so well what do you do to to get by i said well this is what i do if i have any problems and this is just how i was taught i write my pros and my cons down right right and pros right everything i can check mark all of those things off and then the cons whatever those problems is i focus on those things and attack those so because i know what the problem is and I can work on those things and it isn't an overnight process where I literally say, yo, I got to fix this tonight. Right. And I can kind of move 
move forward, like tactically attack it in such a manner mm-hmm. that slowly but like nothing happens overnight. I chip mm-hmm. away it's at one, it. It's one day at a time, one yeah. day at a time. And just being able to be aware that, you know, something may not be right to mm-hmm. be able to speak to people. And that's what I do. Mm-hmm. Just talk it out. Sometimes you need time for yourself. Sometimes you just need to take a walk. Yeah. Um, Health wise, I do believe that I should be in the gym more, right? I think we all should. <laughs> but the gym more. what I try, what I try to do is, um, I was taught that um, anyone that does anything too much, that's an addiction. It is. So I don't drink as much as I used mm-hmm. to before. I used to be outside, and this is what kind of stopped me doing that. Long Island iced tea, my drink of choice. <laughs> wow. Three of those. Wow. Think about music industry, folks. We go out at least three to four times a week. So in order for me to and get that's right, seven liquors in those. Yes. Yeah. So go ahead and that's multiply the bottles, one li- different bottles food. of liquor you drinking. Yes. And then one day I was sitting at the bar at um, Red Eye Grill and uh, I was like, yo, you know how many calories is in this Long Island? And she was like 3,600. Wow. And I was like, yo, so then I have, I said, what is the average person calorie intake per day? And she was like, mm, 12. I said 1,200. She's like, yeah, 1,200. And you're drinking, you had three of these at 36, a joint, and I might see you three more times this week. On top of- Beyond total intake on just one, two? Yeah. On top of whatever food that I had already eaten during the day. Consists of bread, grains, rice, blah, 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 blah. So I was pleasantly plump. Like, like for real. (laughs) So what I try and do is I try and be mindful. I don't drink as much. Um, I try and stay away from a lot of the breads and the grainy stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and I do hit the gym. Shout out to my brother. He's, right. I know he's Shout probably sitting here brother. watching. Yeah. Like, yeah, you should be in the gym every day, brother. We we pay for the membership and we may go like twice a week, but we'll turn it up. You know, it, it's, it's happening. As long as you're taking steps and you're doing it, mm-hmm. you know, and taking care of mental and taking care of physical um and I like to walk too. I think it's Walks. a New York thing. Walk, you know, walking is a New York thing. I have family come visit sometimes, and they just complain. We walk about three blocks, and they're done because they drive everywhere. So, yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, you see me moving, and people stop me like, "Where were you going?" They'll call me on my phone like, "Where were you going so fast?" I'm like, that's just the way I mm-hmm. walk. New York walk. Mm-hmm. So, so what do you think about the internet now? We talked about influence earlier. We talk, now let's talk about. All of the things and the people you see got jammed up this year. That's things are coming back from whatever, wherever, and however things happen in the industry. And now, like, people are starting to speak up, or, or like we were talking about the, the marijuana used to be illegal and now it's legal. So now it's like, yeah, you can't walk around can't. New York without smelling it. Right. So, yeah. vice versa now, dudes used to be screaming, it just ain't. You know, shit or whatever. No, you get sued and for then, that now. And, and now you can't like, but that that was our music. Like that's what it was. Women was singing it, ain't no fun in the party and all that. But now it's like everybody got this enlightenment. Like, like now that's, that's disrespectful. We can't do that. And now there's laws and things being passed. Like, how do you feel about the industry? Them going back, <laughs> getting well, having receipts on people. Well, I I hated the receipts thing. Um, always like I don't. You know, we come from a culture where we don't out people. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, if something happens, then we keep it. And it's just a, a cool story that you have tucked right. in the bag. But this, this receipts and outing people and, and doing all this and all that. The other day, and I literally put this up, I said, look, man, I don't think that, and please forgive me, I don't think that Puff is innocent on any of the things that he's accused of, right? Mm-hmm. Accused of, air quotation marks. Mm-hmm. Um but now, allegations. Uh, the allegations. But now you have to look at his teacher, right? Mm-hmm. Who was he taught by? He was taught by Clive Davis, right? And the one thing that I know, and this is, again, maybe this will get me in trouble somewhere down the line, and I don't care. But this is what I know, that in, like, little studies and stuff like that, when you get people that are pedos and mm-hmm. they take advantage of other right. people, why they do that is they're regaining their power that they lost from someone else. So if he was forced to do something in order for him to remain powerful and do what he's doing, he's doing that to someone else. Right. Mm -hmm. So go to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go to the original teacher who let him in. What parties did he get into? Who told him that that was all right? This industry isn't ran by us. There's no 
brown person on the top of this whole entire thing that's mm-hmm. pressing the buttons. Mm-hmm. It's all the non-melanated people, right? And they're the ones that are in control. So therefore, now you got to go look at those guys. Like, why, why, why didn't we talk about like all of the things that happened on this Weinstein Island and stuff like I that? I think now is the time where a lot of those things are being exposed. Maybe because victims are stepping up now, I, you know, and I guess it's, it's up to the court systems and everyone else in consensus, I guess, to decide what is going to happen, whether it's the people deciding not to listen to the music anymore or the court system to decide what's going to happen, you know, Mm -hmm. in terms of justice for that person. Of course. Again, you know, they are allegations and until proven, you know, People know what they know, stories circulate, but at the end of the day, it's about who's going to be able to prove those things. Yeah, I mentioned yeah. I've never been to invited to one of those parties. Right. And uh, and and honestly, <laughs> to one of those parties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been invited to a couple to party other party. parties. <laughs> yeah, you know. But <laughs> but I will say this: like a lot of people that you know. When you go down that rabbit hole, then what do you really kind of expect? Like, you know, it's a, you know, it's a rabbit hole. It's of, almost like a double-edged sword. You yeah. Know, like, along, you know, um, and only people that have been exposed to those situations, you know, are speaking up about it now. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, it's all allegations until... Until the court system, and to the court life. system, or people, or the people, yeah, but we see, the people decide to. But when people start paying for stuff, like and it, it's silver, <laughs> like the allegations is like, yeah, you, you get yeah, it, yeah, yeah, you know, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you pay two or three times, it's like, all right, like, like, because if I'm not guilty of doing something, I'm, I'm, I'm the type, I'm gonna argue all the way to the end, like, oh, no, nah, I didn't do that. Of course, it's not what I be did. giving up their, their, their coins or money, but again. <laughs> we have to leave it there mm-hmm. because we don't know. Right, we don't um, know. So where should we move on to um, looking forward as a student of life, right? Mm-hmm. What do you want to learn more about? Well. Because we're constantly learning. We're constantly learning. We're constantly teaching. Everyone is the teacher. Our first pa- our parents or whoever were our guardians were our first set of teachers, whatever we learn from them, positive or negative. Mm-hmm. Somewhere down the line, you know, we either keep what was good or send off what wasn't and you model whatever for your children in the future, right? So yeah. what do you want to learn more about? Um, well, learning more of, I, f- I don't feel like there's, I learn something new every single day because I got uh-huh. small children, right? Uh-huh. And they always come in with the like the weirdest of things. Like someone came in and said, "Hey, Daddy, I know how to open your iPad." And I was like, <laughs> "I'm learning new slang every day." So. Yeah. Oh, like <laughs> smack, cool. slap. I'm learning. Yeah. Uh, what did they tell me? Uh, Yo, we gonna go get the Udas. I was like, "What's the Udas?" <laughs> That's a shooter. Like I didn't. Oh, I had no goodness. idea. <laughs> I was in the Bronx. And I, I just decided I was in the Bronx and one of the little kids woke up. He said, yo, OG, you looking real fresh. Oh. Is y'all is hiring? <laughs> I turned and I looked at him and I said, what? He said, yeah, I'm just trying to get Flea to go back to school. Oh, wow. So I said, Flea. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'm sorry. Pardon me. I thought I looked cool, right? Little mm-hmm. Applejack hat, three quarter inch cold, Flea. little boots or whatever, whatever. So I said, Flea, what's, what's, what's Flea mean? He was like, oh, oh. You old niggas used to say fly. Oh my goodness. You old niggas is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> right? Right to my face, too. Like, you. I learned ski masks with these shysties. I learned, they were like, Yo. Miss, do you know how to um, sturdy? I'm like, what are you talking about? Oh, I don't even try and dance anymore. <laughs> they doing way too much. They can't do any of that. My knees, my poor knees. <laughs> yeah. We, we, uh, so, amongst the older, but learning wise, I, it's just, I, I would like to understand their logic, right? Because, and, and I'm just talking about the younger people, period. Mm-hmm. Like, I'd like to just sit with them and say, okay, if you guys are making drill music and music that's doing this, like, we made hip-hop, right? Because I asked them, I said, what does drill music mean to you guys? And they said, it's music to kill to, mm-hmm. right? I had no idea. I had no idea that drill I music was... That. Fabio Farah and, and the, little, the little white boy made a song about, in the classroom, teaching you 
teach me how to drill. Wow. Yeah. And if you watch the video, it's supposed to be funny and all that, but what this what he's showing him is how to shoot people. I have no idea. And if you watch it, it's just mad calamical. If, if, if they were talking about anything else, I would love this song right now because it's so like catchy. perfect, catchy. But I'm like, he's really like showing him how to shoot somebody. Yeah. And the kids, I That's teach kids, wild. and they're mad impressionable already. I'm like, this. Ed. So now we got the black dude from Brooklyn teaching the little white international, I mean, uh, instant star on TV. Yeah, Fa- Fa- um, Fabio, right? Was it? Yeah, Fabio Farr. And what's the kid's name? I, I can't get his name. name. But I seen that he, they both wear the blue Montclair jackets and all of that. It's going to come to me. Buddy. Even yeah. though sometimes they, they, you know, they, they flip it on us and they say that our music spoke about a lot of that. But. What was, like what was happening music. with our music, with our music in our time, and I know we sound ancient saying that, our music <laughs> in, in during our time, you had, you had so many different options. If you did not want to listen to one thing, yes. you had so many different other options. You Red could man, to and, man. And they didn't put NWA, no, NWA or even Public Enemy and them, you didn't hear them on the radio all day. You heard them on mixtapes and all that. Right, right. Yeah. What they're doing right now, they're putting them on the radio, they're putting them we, we in school at the school dance yeah. with the kids yeah. and they want to hear Cardi or whoever the Sexy drill red. songs Sexy only the red. drill songs is these kids want to hear 90% they want to hear so but you know the one thing is they getting used they the the young kids um, as D know I, I work with kids as well I, I worked at the same facility where DMX came from up mm-hmm. in Dobbs Ferry Westchester New York and I was a music production coordinator there. So they had a studio there. I ran that for six years and they all came in there and they did that music. They did the drill. I had sessions with them. I used to ask all them questions. A lot of them, they don't know. They following. The, the, the difference between it was more leaders in our time. You know what I'm saying? We had the poor Agreed. righteous yes, teachers. We, we had we had we had Trop Call Quest. We had we had KRS one. We had people that did. We had the political uh, rappers, the conscious rappers. We had the, the gangster rappers. We had the hardcore rappers. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we had different Honest. elements Honest. of Absolutely. different, uh, even the women. You know what I'm saying? We had that. We didn't have the uh, the sexy reds or that. That wouldn't fly. That would not fly. You know what I'm saying? So it, now it a lot of the stuff we we learned, we, didn't, we knew what was what and what was good what was bad you know we knew that crack was whack you know right. they, they they protested and that, that a, you know that what i'm saying a, uh, to stop the violence movement that. we had to stop the violence who i i, I asked the young kid i said who's your who's your leader your young age uh of today i'll wait no response no I, and i'll ask y'all that yeah watch this watch this i'm i'm a I manage a kid named peso peso did two records for uh extension right mm-hmm. Uh, Infinity 888 featuring Joey Badass and Slipknot featuring Killshot, right? Mm-hmm. They called me to do um, Career Day, New Brunswick, New Jersey, mm-hmm. right? My cousin calls. She said, I can't make it. Can you make it for me? So I, right. I go, right? And I'm naming all these records, Chicken Noodle Soup, uh, Eric Badu, Boo, uh, 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 uh. and they was looking at me like I had two heads, right? And I seen one of the little girls on the... Um, she had like a drawing of extension on mm. like the front of her book. And I said, Oh, we did two records over there. The whole classroom went nuts. nuts right. right? Mm. The girl, it, it got so crazy. The girl got up, walked out of the room and started crying. The teacher had to stop the class, right. leave the room and go get the girl. Right. And I'm standing there and I'm like, yo, I just named at least 30 records that I know your mama listened to, mm-hmm. your grandmoms, your uncles and them, ride y'all around, bringing y'all to them from the school. You, they listened to these records, but y'all only cared about these two records that we produced. And then I was like, what? I didn't understand uh, X at all, right? And I said, what makes him so cool and unique? And they was like, he's our version of Nas. Yeah, he was emotional. I heard that the other day in school, too. It's funny you brought him up. That's exactly what I heard, that he was the his the, the quality of music that he was on his way to start making, like he he gave his soul, like DMX. Yeah. Like okay. we love DMX because right. what? He'll yeah. tell about he smoking crack or robbing people or whatever. But about who mm-hmm. he was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But they called him and they was like, too bad he was taken away from us. And I was like, only one? That's all y'all have? There's nobody else? And they say it occasionally about Kodak Black, but then they'll say like, he's also on drugs all crazy as right. well. So I, just, I don't think I, they have anybody because I asked them, is, yeah. I, I asked them, said 
give me somebody two years ago that y'all still a fan of. They they fan out real quick. It's microwave artists that they they they, they do not like loyal. J Cole though. They, they do like J Cole. I, some, I give them that. Yeah, yeah some do, some. but a lot of them are fake fans. I call them fake fans because us we are real fans. And I say this too. I say I I, I if y'all really support them. I know they have the physical. I know most of them don't really care about physicals, but I'm like, go buy, go buy their physical stuff. Go buy their merch. Go, go, really support them. You know what I'm saying? If y'all really listen to their music, they're really fan. Go support them. Go support these artists. If y'all really love these artists. Go if y'all can buy the CD. You don't have to have a CD player, but just buy it to have it. You know well, what I'm saying? I know at least. Yeah, buy it to have. Keep it in the plastic. If it's a classic, you know, in yeah, the, your eyes, the you kids. Know. What I can say, me being a music um, media teacher, is I taught the kids about cassettes, vinyl, and all that, and they get a chance to touch it, feel. I got records in the room, record player, and they'll come. Oh, Mr. Williams, what's this? And they'll put it on, and then they see what it is. And this is middle school, sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade. So there's no excuse now. But I'm curious, like, what is your parents not like? Why don't you? Why? What happened with that generation? This generation before us, the one in the middle of, I don't know what what age. I, I guess it's our generation. That, yeah, we were the parents. Um, we, 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 yeah, we were the parents we were of those two parents. Oh, man. And the yeah. thing is, like with my students, <laughs> I, I, awesome. I, I play music <laughs> right. for yeah. them constantly. So I expose them to all these different genres of music from jazz to blues to, you know, along the line, down the line, so that. I blame they have us, that. though. I blame us. I, okay, I look, so I got it. It is our yeah, generation. Yeah, you, you want to know the why? I, the, the reason why I blame us. Okay. The reason why I blame us is because my son is 23 years old. So while I was out making same here. Yeah, see, while I was out making Erica Badu records and Chico the Barge and so forth and so on, guess what he was doing? He was at home with mommy and mommy is trying to figure out, you know, what dinner is for tonight and what right. uniform. So they know Keisha, he knows Keisha Cole's love song. I bet oh, he knows that song. Very much so. Watch this. This is the even the craziest one. When he was a little kid, he used to stand in front of the TV and watch um, Eve mm -hmm. uh, from Rough Riders yeah. mm -hmm. like she was magic, right? Like in awe. But then after like I stopped being in a house and I'm making records, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. He's open to everything else. Now he's looking at, <laughs> you know, Trina and the girl with the, the, <laughs> the bigger booty and yeah. so forth and so on. So it's, it kind of turned into... He's also a boy, right? And we all know that sex sales. Right, right. So he's looking at what he thinks. And you know what? Let's let, can, can we talk about that one real fast? Uh -huh. Because I had a conversation the other day, and the women was talking about, well, men like this about women. Y'all like only like sexy. I'm like, but y'all like getting dressed and getting sexy. So what? It's like stop getting sexy, stop dressing sexy, and we will stop looking at you. I don't think I don't do think, it for yeah. us. They do. Yeah, it. They thank do it. you. They don't thank do it for us. That's what I'm saying. But that's what we're attracted yeah. to. Female in the room. No, 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 no. no. It, it's a balance. It's a balance. No, I'm, Men I'm have a, expectations I, of what a woman should look like. Uh, other women do. You know they do it for y'all. Yeah, y'all. They do. It they want. They want you, you know, to you know, comment the, them. The funny yeah. thing they know the guy's gonna look. Same thing about men. They say that men will go drive these cars and do all these different things to impress their boys. Of a man? What? Yeah. <laughs> I got the BMW because I like BMWs. I didn't ah. get Homeboy I like know. you. I don't know. Um. <laughs> no, other, I heard I it. We'll never have the answer. I heard it from women. I, I actually have, so that's what I was like. Okay, I already knew it, though. Okay, okay, let's take a lunch break, and the lunch break is what are any of the shops, mom and pop shops, places that you frequent or you want to share with others that you want to show some love to? Well, I I shop at damn near everywhere I, because, again, and this is one of the things that I learned from Badu, like Badu can have the sponsor from Givenchy, but she's at a little thrift shop on 8th Street. What should. does she do with the Givenchy stuff? Does she sell it? Like, she put on all food? <laughs> nah, she wears it, right? She does the thing, but you know, she would. She's a thrift shop lady, so I kind of do it all. I go find little Applejack right. hats all over the place. I'm a hat guy. I like wearing hats. As you can tell. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a gang of different little places. Um, man, I wish that I I can I can see the stores, but I can't right. remember any of the names. Please, guys, if y'all out there watching, please forgive me. I'm sorry. So I have one. I have um, Taste of Heaven in Brooklyn. It's a black owned business, mom and pop. So you want some really good, quick. 
uh, soul food. Go check them out. Yeah, I, you know, also too, uh, shout out to Nas. Shout out to Nas. I oh, go to Sweet Chick. chick. Sweet the Chick. Fish, I, I mean, the there. grits and the, oh. cheap, the grits. I go there just to get the little cup, little $16. The ra- the raspberry butter. Oh, oh that's and the lemon butter. Oh, my God. So and the music is always good. And the music chick. is always Yeah. Good. yeah. Voodoo and, and Best Star also too on Tompkins and Hancock. I frequent there. They, they used to be a spot. Called, well, I go to this, this Dominican spot called Three Way on 188th Street and Webster Avenue in the Bronx. Nice. The the roasted chicken is, is everything <laughs> in Brooklyn. Is best side fry. I like, I love them. Yeah, they, they had the two for one specials these last couple of months. And I, I like I cuts was, and slices in Brooklyn, too. Black on what's it called? Cuts and slices. Cuts, uh, my brother in law told me about that. They yeah. have a sweet chili, um, oxtail slice. The pizza spot, yeah. yeah, it's really, really good pizza. So go support that. They have yeah. a new one in Queens as well. Hey, there's another little sandwich wife and husband that. owned. Wife and husband owned, yes. That's, That's what I mean. me and my wife is gonna do. We're gonna own some stuff. <laughs> you have to places. You have to. You gotta be able to put it together. Like, no cap. Like, I don't think anybody can survive off of uh like in this economy that we're in right now, like one salary. Like you, you, need, you, a team, it, you need a team of people. Like for real, for real. You do, you do it. That's, that's great advice. Stop thinking y'all could do it all by yourself out really here because this world was not set up like that. And it's definitely not. We need community. We need um, other people to support ourselves and we support others because it, it takes a village. It really we just does. moved away from that a bit. But do you do you subscribe to like people having haters? Like people will be online, like, yeah, hey, my haters, if, the, if, if people ain't hating on you, then you're not doing something right. Do you feel like that's that's the perfect way to, to move through this industry? No, I feel like the people that rock with you and they support you is those are the people that you need to like, you know, if you got if you got somebody that posts your thing and your music or repost your whatever it is that you're doing, those are your people. The people like this is what always baffles me. I got 5000 people on Facebook, Facebook. right? They just suspended my 5000. No, yeah, they try to style on me, too. But this is what this is what happens. How come, how come if I post something, I only get a hundred likes in opposed to the five thousand, right? What about your stories? Yeah, same exact <laughs> thing, right? But then watch this. If I put something up there like, yo, I'm having a bad day and this is get crazy. Trauma thousand. Well, of course, the support groups come up. Oh and my it should God. be vice versa, right? Yeah, like where's where's the support? Where's the support and the love. Yeah, if I like something, I repost it. If and I like- we and we 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 blame it on society. Oh, society is like this. The the media. No, it's not the media. We run the media, right? We're the we ones on Facebook and Instagram all day and, and Snapchat and 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 everything else. So don't don't give me the the white media or the Asian stop it. Oh, like no. people, that's the narrative I would love for us to stop yeah. now because it's not everybody else right we now. Do, we do yeah, have support. to take accountability for what we do and what we don't do. We love right? the trauma. Um, we just love the trauma. Support. And steer away and, and aim towards the positive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Trivia. Ready? Look, yes. Uh oh. Ready, ready, ready? This is why I give the money out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So let's see. So there's three questions. <laughs> we got some gag money for you. Money. Um, money. But as a student, you would be hyped getting that fake money. So <laughs> um, in the movie, Juice. Yes. There's a female holding auditions for a DJ. Yes. Who is that female? Queen Latifah. There you go. You get 100. I'll take it. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Okay. Look, look, I made some money. <laughs> so there's three rappers in the movie Juice again. Mm-hmm. Can you name? I'm sorry, there's more than three rappers. There's, there's a bunch more. of different rappers. Can you at least name three of the rappers in the film Juice? Special Ed, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Tupac, mm-hmm. Tretch. Yes. From Naughty by Nature. It's another hundred. And, and now we're taking it to A&D, so Art and Design. Oh, come on. So we I went to Art and Design. Um, famous Art and Design. So we have a lot of musical people. Shout out Art and Shout Design. Uh, art and Design, um, A&D. So... At least three artists could be hip hop artists, could be other musical artists that came out of art and design. Even though we're in there for the drawing and but musical artists, we have a lot of musical artists that came out of art and design. Give you three. Go ahead. Fabulous. Fab. Right. Fab. Fab. One. Um, I'm gonna say. I want to say. Onyx, because right. If I remember correctly, uh, was it my man Dabs? What was Dabs? So I'll, that's partial credit, Dabs. Um, <laughs> so that's our boy Dabs. So his cousin is Sticky. His brother's Fredro. So they would come up all the time and they would sit with us in the lunchroom. Yes. They didn't go to the school. 
Ah, <laughs> you are swore we'll forever. We'll give another chance. We'll give another chance. Keep Shout going. out to Fred Joe. He was up here a couple of weeks ago. Look at yeah. that brother. I'm thinking hard. I'm thinking hard because there's been a gang of dudes that's been around me. There's like, a group. Mm. A whole group. I, I might well, got to take one that. One of the hardest groups in hip hop. We lost one now. De La Soul? Give it. Who is it? I'll give it to you. Um, So we have Chris Christopher Martin. From Kid and Play. Yep. We okay. have Fab. We have Prodigy and Havoc. We have oh. Farrah Munch. We have Tony Bennett. She Bennett. said one of them died the hardest group. Yeah. You went to... Oh, so rest in peace, um, went Prodigy. To Day, so. Yeah, because somebody died. Because she said died. Uh, but yeah. this yeah. is what's so crazy is that I forgot yeah. that Mob Deep was in there because Mob I used Deep. to see Hap Kiwan. Yeah. Kiwan. <laughs> no, I'm, yeah. no disrespect, Hap. Um, I used to see him all the time. Yeah. Half is a good dude. I met. He introduced yeah, me to his mom's cool. Miss Mercedes, and everything. yeah, I met him. He's really good. Yeah. He's a good dude. Yeah. Um, so we did pop clips. All right. So, um, do you have anything that you need to plug that's coming up now? Yes. So there, there's a few different things I'd like to just shout out to all of the young people that are actually still intrigued by the nature of the business. Right. Mm-hmm. That they're not. They don't care about this. Right. They care about the actual artistry. So we're going to be in South by Southwest this year um, with a company called, ah, thank you. That's dope. Poopery, um, oh, Paul right. Levitino, um, and a lady by the name of Susie Bates um, are putting together this dope thing that we're doing at South by Southwest. They have an artist by the name of uh, Keith Young, the preacher. I think he is magical. I think he's going to be a force to reckon with in the business. And I'm never, ever wrong about a record ever. And this is R&B or hip hop? Oh, man. I call his style. between. He's alternative soul. That's what makes it so magical Ah. to me, right? Because there's not a lot of people that fit in that particular lane. But he has the magic. Like, he Mm -hmm. really has the magic. And it, it, you know, as music people, we also, we fall in and out of love with music. Too, like too. him, a lady by the name of shout out Yummy Bingham. Yummy oh, Bingham. Mm-hmm. Today is her birthday. Shout out Yummy. Happy birthday, Happy birthday yummy. yummy. Happy birthday. So we we got uh South by Southwest. We got the Badu birthday bash coming Happy up in Badu. Dallas. Um, that's gonna be phenomenal. We also have um I know Zab is getting he him and Didi are getting married soon. So congratulations. Yeah, they're gonna be doing things. the thing. So we're gonna be around. It's gonna be like uh 2024 is gonna be excellent. Shout out to all my artists that's on Rosemont Music Group via Sony Orchard. Shout out Apollo Mike, you know what I'm saying? Shout out Angel Unique, shout out, you know, T Rose. Karan Young, you know, John Adams. We put a record out on John Adams, you know, all of the people that are riding and waving a flag. Yeah. Shout out to all. Yeah. Listen, shout out to everybody that shout out to these women, these girls that's out here killing the the game right now. I wanted to talk to them about that after the the next question, too. But as I you know, I would love to know what who's your hot takes because we got a young lady that comes on here, um, Little Miss Chit Chat, and she did a her own end of the year uh list and it went viral. Like all the chicks, is, she boxed with everybody. She's actually outside the door. So I'm curious to hear what what you um. Well, who I've been with. listening to yeah. is is a girl, and she might be the roughest girl in the history of time. Um, her name is Big Topic. She is Big from Topic. Big Topic. She has a record out called "Doing My Dance." Mm. And she's rapping with the Hemi on her waist, oh. with the long what? ponytail, like. <laughs> okay. When she when she's doing her records, I feel like like I believe everything she's talking about. Like she means everything, and that's sometimes that's the thing, right? You know, as an A and R guy, I'm listening to these records, and I'm like, I right, yeah, I kind of I'm looking at you, and I don't believe you, right? But you believe, <laughs> believe it, Yo, all right, <laughs> believable, yeah. And not not to put the shine of light on violence, right? Because that's not what we do here at the at the at the lesson plan. Yeah. But I did see that. Whoever that that manager was, lay that dude out in the street that put his hands on or something. I don't seen that clip a couple yeah, months ago. Yeah, she ended up. Yeah, yeah, she's locked up. Yeah. Oh wow. No, nah, she's out already. Oh, she's out. Yeah, I followed also, her. Also, <laughs> wow. Yeah, like they said that she they tried to grab her first, and then once they, I seen that tussle, yeah, yeah, and she doubled back and clipped everybody. So, yeah, yeah, she's out already. And she, self defense. Yeah, that, they, but that not New York. 
That was they, not New York. I think that was like Miami. They got to stand your ground. Oh yeah, it's in Florida. Yeah. Oh yeah, she could she could get away with that. Yeah. I me personally, like again, I don't believe in yo. Don't jump out the car and put your hands on me because then what happens next is what happens next, right? But then there's also a moment where you can be like, I right, there's an opportunity for me to walk away. Like I had to tell somebody like, yo, there's if. <sighs> I believe this for real, for real. We're the people of light, right? We're mm-hmm. moving around. We're making things happen. You have the light. You have the light. Mm-hmm. My engineer guy over here got the light, right? We also attract when you when you got the light, you attract butterflies and all types of beautiful things. Mm-hmm. But in that same light, you also attract mosquitoes, beetles, Absolutely. and all types of other things. There's demons out here walking around like everybody else, right? So sometimes you have to decipher like whether this is going to be a life changing situation that right. can in my whatever. I'm doing to go sit down for 16 years. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Would you want to just be able to want to throw everything away for just one moment of whatever that is? And it's never worth it. It's not. You you miss an opportunity. And that's that's a teachable moment right there as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Being able to stop, reflect, and see if this is really worth. Yeah. Me ending my whole entire thing for this sucker. Uh, How long in life that you've been living that you you felt like you had that self-control? Because that's emotional intelligence. And I've had it for a very long time. I stayed out of jail since 15 for doing little fights. Oh, I'm from Brownsville. Right. We beat we beat you up if you say, yo, suck my or yo, your mother Mm -hmm. or whatever. We beat you up for that. Right. So it took me a little while longer to say, all right, well, bet you can stand over there and you can talk all that, but you ain't came over here and said it yet or put your hands on me. Right. Right. So you could talk your talk. So it took me a little while, but hands down, you know, we rock and roll. Mm -hmm. So it does come with, um, with age because I wasn't always like this. Right. Growth. Growth comes with age, experience and life. Right. Yes. And again, we are all students, yes. but we're teachers as well. Yes. Um, but that's what brings me back to the other part. I had, and this is just sidebar. I had this young kid and he said, oh, you might be stuck in 1996, right? So I started laughing. I said, why you say that? He said, oh, you know, they do musically, music differently. It's mm-hmm. algorithms and all of this, mm-hmm. whatever, whatever. So I said, all right, I'd rather be stuck in 1996. We sold physical copies, right? We sold mm-hmm. vinyl, records, tapes, CDs, mm-hmm. everything at $13, $14 cost. You guys are not married to the artist, right? You guys buy a single for a dollar and that's where the buck stops, right? Just $1. Then these people got to whack this up. We say, you're stuck in 1996. So I said, all right, well, cool, right? Let me ask you a solid question. This is also just just for the room. Mm-hmm. I said, um, you got a heart surgeon, right? And you have to get heart surgery. You got to get heart surgery. And you got a surgeon that's been in the game for 25 years. And you got a young Doogie Howser dude that's been in the game for two years. Mm-hmm. Who do you pick to do the heart surgery to keep you alive? The one that's been in there for years. That's what, what we experience. said, right? Yeah. That's what we said. The little kid said, I'll pick the Doogie Howser dude. Because it's quick and fast. Yeah. And I say. And that's the time we're in. And that's what we're trying to change. Yes, very much so. And I was like, nah, I'll take the dude. Because what if the older man knows how to stop the hemorrhaging in your mm-hmm. heart, press the special button? Everything comes with experience and yeah. life learned lessons. And and that's what I would like to leave these young, young people with. If there's anything that I left this room with today is, yo, living your life, your experiences, Going through it, no one can tell you how to do it every no, single day. You not. you have to learn, but be open. There's a blueprint, but yeah. what you do with it, it is on you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so. Mr. Any, Williams, any anything, anybody else that you want to give credit to that that is due at this current time, like Kedar Massenberg. Okay. Kedar Massenberg was a very, very, very big pivotal point in my career. Shout out to Sylvia Rohn. I learned a lot from Sylvia, Kedar, again, James Rosemont or Jimmy Hinch, um, known to the industry. Wendy, Wendy Day as well. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't give Wendy Day her flowers, but Wendy Day, she had Rap Coalition. And she was the one that got cash money, their $30 million deal. Mm-hmm. A lot of people yeah. don't know Wendy. that. Yeah, Wendy Day. Um, again, Michael Blue Williams, you know, outcast manager. I rode along with him for a very long time. And just AZ, AZ and Jazzo were the two. Shout out to AZ. Jazzo. They were the they were the guard bodies that you know kind of kept me on the straight and narrow. I was still a knucklehead from Brownsville, but, yeah, but guidance, you had yeah, guidance. Those yeah. were your teachers. Yeah, the OGs. So. You know, 
That's it. We, we closing it. out. This yeah. is the exit so ticket. This is the exit ticket. Oh, we, we only had lunch. We only had a lunch, and then we, we had went lunch. Right back we had to the, a break. We, we smoked. Had, um, she bring coquitos. Yeah, <laughs> you passed. It was you, delicious. You passed, you passed with flying colors. This is our first episode out, and we happy that we was able to get, get in, get in, and get out. You know what I mean? No, yeah. no, no fights in the hall or nothing like that. Okay. No, I love it. I love. I, I like. See, and this is the thing. A lot of people don't understand this as well. Is that share support? Like all of these, like yo, hands down. The second you guys called and was like, yo, we trying to do this thing. Yo, I couldn't cancel. I couldn't. Yo, I, I thought about. It. I was like, oh man, it's gonna be a crazy <laughs> snowstorm. How am I gonna get out Literally there? With drives you yeah, crazy. she said that too. Yeah, and, and then was, they, they faked us out right? with the snowstorm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's raining out. outside. But I appreciate you guys for having me. I thank I you guys for you, KK. let me wave my flag and talk my ish. Shout out again, RMG and everybody. That waves the flag. Angel Unique, Apollo Mike, uh, KO, um, all my people in Cincinnati, Dre, Butch, the locks too. The Jada locks. Kiss taught me some shit. I know yeah. some shit. That's, how, that's where I, that's the time I remember you from. You was you was A and R and with you was running with Jada Kiss in them at yeah. that time. Yeah. You know. Jada Kiss is a, a phenomenal guy. He's mm-hmm. also super smart. Most deaf also as well. Absolutely. He, super smart. Styles P too is very Styles P. He's super smart Pharmacy too. for life. Yeah, yo, I love get it. Get on that. Yes. Get on it. Get on it. So yeah, this is the movement. So we're gonna have a we're gonna have some some, some more phenomenal guests up, and we're gonna keep so, these conversations gonna keep floating around the internet. Oh, so you're gonna yeah. see pieces of this, these conversations go because this is this is this is te- these are teachable lessons, and we gotta keep putting that out there. So mm-hmm. we're happy to have you up here with us. And so you did. You asked me. Up. You asked me one thing. You said who taught me how to cut? And again, I don't ever give him credit for it. But DJ Boogie Black out of Queens. All right. The, n- not Boogie Black from Harlem. Right. You know what right. that Boogie, Boogie Black. Black. Boogie Black from Queens. Royal Flushing. I actually, he put me on with Royal Flushing. Shout out Royal Flushing. Royal Flushing was up here Royal a couple Flush. of weeks ago. And he, he's, he's got going. He's got, yeah, he's he going, going through. We'll be at SOBs actually broadcasting live that day. So if we all go in as a yeah. unit or we'll be out there, yeah, we'll be I'd in there. Support. We'll support. Yeah. Let's go support. Yeah. yeah. Flush is a good dude, man. I hate that he's actually going through this part, yeah. you know. He's taking it like a champ, though. When he, he was is, up he here, really yeah, I, I, I don't know if I could be that strong, like, no, knowing that. He said, yo, I got the news, and I went down south and went on tour. I came back, because I deal with that when I get back. I'm like, man. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I didn't, again, I didn't, I didn't, you know, and this is just ignorance, right? Mm-hmm. I didn't know cancer affected us like that. Right. Right. And I was just like, yo, wow, like cancer for real? We're like higher risk of a lot of things. Yeah, but see, that's that's the that's our mind frame, right? right? Because I thought that, you know, people get killed more from bullets and whatnot and opposed to cancer. Like mm-hmm. cancer was like, that's a real thing. Like we really Yeah. Yeah. So I had to educate myself on that too as well. So so we're learning, we're learning, we're constantly But I'm going to count their money. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all, we out of here. Right. Stay tuned it's, for the next episode. The Peace, you. y'all. All right. All Yo, this is KK Roseman, and you're rocking with RMG. You know, and I completed my lesson plan with DWI and Milky Mills. Thank you guys for having me. I appreciate y'all. Peace.